My colleagues in the House of Representatives to pass the legislation we passed here in the Senate uh, a few weeks ago called the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act, or CARA. We passed it on March 10th. That was 27 days ago, almost a month. Every day we lose about 120 Americans, they say, to drug overdoses. That means during that time period, those 27 days, we've lost about 3,240 additional Americans who we represent to substance abuse and death from heroin and prescription drug overdoses. Since 2007, drug overdoses have killed more people in Ohio than any other cause of accidental death, surpassing car accidents. It's probably true nationally now as well. Addiction is treatable, but nine out of 10 people who need treatment aren't getting it. That's a tragedy, and it shows that the system we have right now just isn't working. That's what our legislation is intended to address, among other things. In one five-day span since we passed CARA, so in the last month, in one of the cities I represent, Cleveland, Ohio, we had five people, five people die from heroin and fentanyl overdoses. I was in Athens, Ohio on March 28th, more than two weeks after we passed CARA, and I received a tour of what's called the Rural Women's Addiction Recovery facility. Uh, Dr. Joe Day and Ruth Tartar took me around, had the opportunity to meet with some of the brave women who stepped forward to treat their addiction issues. Some of them there with their kids. Uh, they have an amazing success rate. I will tell you, three days after I left Athens, Ohio, $40,000 worth of heroin was seized at a traffic stop very close to this treatment center. It's everywhere. It knows no zip code. It's in your rural areas. It's in your suburban areas. It's in your inner cities. States are starting to take action. Ohio's taking action. Your states are taking action. Communities are taking action. Local leaders know this is a problem, but they want the federal government to be a better partner. And that's what CARA provides. It provides best practices from around the country. It provides more funding for some critical elements, but evidence-based, based on research, what actually works. Our states and local communities are desperate for this right now. This legislation, by the way, Mr. President, is not just bipartisan, but it's also bicameral. In other words, we spent the last three years putting this bill together, not just with Republicans and Democrats across the aisle, but also with our colleagues in the House. I'm encouraged by the fact that the CARE legislation in the House has 113 co-sponsors. It is bipartisan. It is based on good evidence. It is based on a lot of work and effort. Today, I heard through a media account that one of the House leaders said there is interest in moving something even this month. That's great. Uh, but he also talked about hearings and markups and so on. Let's be sure that the hearings and markups don't delay what we know we should do, which is to pass the CARA legislation. It's been bicameral. It's been bipartisan. It's passed the Senate with a 94 to 1 vote. And that never happens around here. 94 to 1. This is legislation that we know will make a difference right now in our communities dealing with a crisis we all face. Let's move this legislation. I say to my friends in the House, with all due respect, this legislation has been carefully crafted and we've done the hard work. I mentioned we spent three years of fact-finding on this bill. We didn't think we had all the right answers, so we went out to experts all over the country. We took time to listen. We consulted with them. We listened to experts, doctors, law enforcement, patients in recovery, we listened to the drug experts in the Obama administration, such as the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy, ONDCP. They've been very helpful. We brought in people from HHS, Department of Health and Human Services, and listened to them. We brought in people from my home state of Ohio and other states around the country. We've heard from family members, many of whom have channeled their grief at losing a loved one into advocacy for the CARA legislation because they know it's gonna help. One of them testified here in the Judiciary Committee when we marked up the legislation and had our hearing beforehand. Tonda DeRay from Carrollton, Ohio, she talked about having lost her daughter, who was a very successful high school student, engaged to be married, everything was going great. As she turned 21, she made a mistake. She tried heroin. She went into recovery, she relapsed, she ended up dying of an overdose. This, unfortunately, is a story that's retold all over our country. It's moms, it's dads, it's aunts and uncles, it's brothers and sisters who come forward to tell us about these tragic stories of losing a loved one. They want this legislation to pass because they know it's gonna help. 
another family member or a friend or a coworker or someone else they've never met, but who they want to help so they don't have to go through the grief that they've gone through. Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, Democrat, and I have worked on this legislation together, along with many other people in this chamber. Uh, we've also worked, as I said, with many in the House side. Uh, we've worked with folks on both sides of the aisle and both sides of the Capitol because this has become an issue that affects us all, and it's a nonpartisan issue. We have to move it forward. We had five forums that we held here in Washington, D.C., bringing in experts to get counsel and advice. They helped us develop a legislative proposal that was thoughtful because it actually addressed the real problem. In April of 2014, we had a forum on the criminal justice system, which included alternatives to incarceration. And you'll see that in our legislation. The notion is for people who are users, who get arrested for possession, let's not just throw them in jail because that hasn't worked. Let's get them into treatment and get them into a recovery program that works. In July 2014, we held a forum on how women are impacted by this drug epidemic, looking particularly at addiction and treatment responses. Some new data that's out there now shows that most of the people who are suffering from heroin and prescription drug addiction are women. In December of 2014, we held a forum on the science of addiction, how we could get at this from a medical point of view, how we can come up with better medical approaches to this to be able to stop the craving to deal with the addiction problem, to get people through withdrawal. We also talked about how to address some of the collateral consequences of addiction. In April of 2015, we held a forum on our youth and how we can better promote drug prevention. After all, keeping people from getting into the funnel of addiction in the first place has to be a priority. To avoid going down that funnel of addiction, we need better prevention, better education. That is part of our legislation. We also had input there about what's working in recovery and what's not working in recovery. We held a forum in July of 2015 to talk about our veterans, to talk about the very sad situation with veterans who are coming back to our shores who have PTSD, post-traumatic stress syndrome, who have brain injuries. Some recent data shows that about 20% of those returning veterans with those issues are becoming addicted to prescription drugs or heroin. Therefore, veterans' courts is a major part of our legislation to help these drug courts that are focused on mental health and addiction, specifically for our veterans. And I've seen them in Ohio. They're working. They're working great. It's unbelievable. I talked to a guy who'd been in and out of the system his whole life. He's about 45 years old now. He finally found this court that was going to help him. Took him out of jail, got him into treatment, hanging over his head the possibility of incarceration if he didn't do the right thing and stay clean. He's now a senior at The Ohio State University, about to get his degree, and he's back reunited with his family for the first time in years, and he's clean. It can work. The final result was a legislative text that reflected this open and deliberative process I've talked about. This bill, just like the research it supports, is evidence-based. We didn't ask who had the idea. We just asked whether it was a good idea. It's no wonder that CARA has support from 130 national groups now, from the Fraternal Order of Police, to stakeholders in public health, doctors and nurses, those in recovery, experts in the field, people who actually know what's going on because they're in the trenches working on this. They want this bill passed. They know it will help them and help them now. Mr. President, as I said, the vote was 94 to 1. This means 94 senators say this bill is ready to go. And these are senators from every state in the union now that support this legislation, therefore representing every congressional district in the United States of America. It makes sense. It expands prevention and educational efforts to prevent opiate abuse, the use of heroin, prescription drugs. It increases drug disposal sites to get medications out of people's hands and get it in the right hands. It takes this medication off the bathroom shelves. It has a drug monitoring program to get at the overprescribing issue. So many people who are currently addicted to heroin started with prescription drugs. In fact, the majority did. There's different data out there, but it's very clear. Prescription drugs is a huge part of heroin addiction. It also authorizes law enforcement task forces to combat heroin and meth. Law enforcement has an important role to play here. It expands training and the availability of naloxone, or what's called Narcan, to law enforcement. This is to our firefighters. When you go to a firehouse in your state, or for those listening in the house to your district, ask them, are you going on more fire runs, or are you going on more runs to help people with overdoses. They will tell you what they tell me, overdoses. 
That's what it's come to. That's happening in your fire department, in your community. By the way, to tell you how much this law can make a difference, because we do help get the training to be able to use Narcan and get the Narcan or naloxone into the right hands, to tell you how much this will help, Ohio public safety officials have administered naloxone over 16,000 times since 2015. 16,000 overdoses that might otherwise have resulted in someone's death, because for the most part, this miracle drug works. First responders know how important it is. That's why, again, the Fraternal Order Police supports this bill. They want to equip their officers, but so do the firefighters. CARE also supports recovery programs, including those focused on youth and building communities of recovery to, av to avoid people getting into addiction in the first place. It also creates a national task force on recovery because there's a lot of information out there that we need to bring together to find out what works and what doesn't work precisely in terms of dealing with the collateral consequences imposed by addiction. It also expands treatment for pregnant women who struggle with addiction and provides support for babies who suffer from what's called neonatal abstinence syndrome. What does that mean? That means babies are born addicted. In Ohio, tragically, we've had a 750% increase in the number of babies born with addiction in the last 12 years. So I've been to the hospitals. I've been to St. Rita's in Lima. I've been to Cleveland Rainbow Babies. I've been to Cincinnati Children's. I've seen these babies. These are tiny babies who are addicted, and you have to take them through withdrawal. And these compassionate nurses and doctors who are doing it, God bless them. I ask them, what's going to happen to these babies? They tell me, Rob, we don't know. We don't know what the long-term consequences of This is so new. But it's dramatic, and it's happening in all of your hospitals. These neonatal units are now taking on a whole other task, which is helping babies through withdrawal. I've visited folks who are not only pregnant and addicted and talked to them about what they're going through and what the consequences are going to be, and it's sad, and many of them say, Rob, the grip of addiction is so great, so great, I'm now in treatment, but I worry about what's going to happen to my baby. We also expand treatment for expectant and postpartum, postpartum women for that reason. And these expectant and postpartum women who need this help can make the right decision with more help from us. It expands residential treatment programs for pregnant women who are struggling with addiction. It would create a pilot program to provide family-based services to women who are addicted to opiates. CARA also helps veterans, as I said. It allows those veterans to get into a veteran's court where they can be helped to walk through how you get out of this addiction, how you get into recovery, you can get support from other veterans around you to provide the kind of help you need to get out of this cycle of incarceration and addiction. What do we say to the 40 million Americans, 40 million Americans who are struggling with addiction when they ask, why don't you guys act? <laughs> the Senate Act at 94 to one, why can't we get this done? It's time to move. They shouldn't have to wait, we shouldn't have to wait. To those 40 million, by the way, who struggle, to those who think they can't overcome this addiction, to those who believe there's no one out there to help them, the message is you are not alone. There is hope. You can beat this. I've seen it. There are people who care and want to help. There's so many heartbreaking stories of addiction, but there are also so many stories of hope. I think about Vanessa Perkins. She's from Nelsonville, Ohio. Vanessa became addicted to heroin. Once she became addicted, she also became a victim of sex trafficking. Now, these two are related. In Ohio, they tell me that most sex trafficking has now to do with heroin addiction. In other words, the trafficker gets these women, usually women, addicted to heroin, and that's one, one way they become dependent on their trafficker. What Vanessa tells me is that it took her a long time to turn her life around, but she was courageous and brave enough to seek treatment, and she's now back on track. For the last six years, she's been helping others. Again, taking her experience and using it to help others to deal with their addiction. She's on the board of a group called Freedom a la Carte. It's a company in Columbus, Ohio. I visited last month, which provides job opportunities for trafficking victims. They do a heck of a job. And they teach these women a trade, too, in the culinary arts. And now, so many of these women who have been trafficked, who have been heroin addicts, 
are back on their feet, reunited with their families, knowing the dignity and self-respect that comes from the work they're doing and from helping others. There is hope. Treatment can work. Mr. President, leaders in the House say they want to move anti-heroin legislation through regular order. Again, I heard today that one of the leaders said that they're planning to take action. I've had conversations with Speaker Ryan on this issue. I've had conversations with other leaders in the House on it. I take them at their word. I'm hopeful we can see the House begin to act next week when that chamber returns. But I will say this. The House must act, and they must act soon. I'm not going to be patient on this. This is urgent and people's lives are at stake. The House must pass this bill so the President can sign it and so it can begin to make a real difference in the lives of the people we represent. This is our responsibility. We need to take advantage of this opportunity that the Senate has given us by this huge vote, 94 to 1, to get this legislation to the President and get it enacted into law. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield back my time.